I'll begin with India and what's happened in India in recent times. In fact, in India in recent times, there have been a spate of very violent riots. See, everyone talks about elections. The real impact of fake news has been on rioting and the violence it's created. In fact, in every state, whenever the riot happens, the first thing they have to do is to shut off the internet. The state has to do it because it is very clear it's the source of rumor. And two things are happening in India which make fake news very powerful. One, I think what is happening is the new models of development have no folklore. Earlier India had an idea of the stranger, the alien, the visitor, the migrant. There was, that folklore contains society in an interesting way. The new models of development have no folklore, no ideas of storytelling. And when you don't have storytelling, Fake news takes over the story. Fake news is bad version of gossip. The old version of gossip had implicated a lot of people in different ways. It actually created a complexity, uh, inclusion. Fake news actually startles, excludes. And that's why in the last few years in India, more than elections, it has been creating violence and artificial violence that fake news has become very powerful. What is the reason for it? One, I think there's a failure of storytelling. Development has no storytellers. Development creates new kinds of suspicion. And a group like yours, which has a certain sense classical model of democracy, reworked for the new generation, can become the storytellers which tries to explain why these kind of things happen. Why people have to control their suspicions. Why they need new narratives to understand the appearance of the migrant, the alien. Because in a way, because it's so used for violence, it becomes perfect thing at election time. In fact, in India, before elections come, there's always a spate of violence, all created by fake news. Now, the problem is, if you look at TV, which is the other imagination we have, it's historical. TV, in fact, has no analysts. In fact, if, uh, TV in India is an exercise in hysteria, mass hysteria enacted on the screen. A group like yours which does conversation, which does listening, which doesn't upscale your story. You say with a simple group, listening to a story, telling a story, acquires a sense of a new realism. It's not objectivity, it's a new realism which says, look, something is happening, we are giving you a story, we are telling you how to relate to it. It makes sense to you. Just listen to us. The appeal is modest, but the it will spread. And I think this is why what I call the small rationalities of the old society are necessary for the new development models. Because otherwise the stranger has no place. In the new society, we have no theory of hospitality. In the old society, the stranger would always be welcomed. He would be a guest. In the new society, a stranger is an alien and therefore suspect. And what has happened is the digital age has been the age of suspicion and the age of anxiety. And when anxiety and suspicion meet in a modern mass democracy, the consequences are tragic. In fact, in a very strange way, to me, the digital age is the age of democratic tragedy. And I think this is something we have to understand. And the tragedy is very simple. It comes from the fact that we don't understand communities. Digital ages create some kind of communities. But when it comes to mass society in elections, that sense of community is missing. Especially when you look at violence in India. See, in India, the elections are not so important as the violence preceding the elections. It contaminates, it stereotypes. In fact, the digital age simplifies us and them. But then voting is very easy. When people like you come in, us and them becomes a neighborhood of differences, a neighborhood of gossip and conversations. And I think that's really what makes a group like yours fascinating. So you don't oversell your story. TV in India oversells everything. In fact, the biggest advertising gimmicks are now around politics and the pretensions of politics. Now, if you bring politics back to conversation, to listening, to a certain sense of modesty, 
to a certain sense of scale, to a certain idea that you can even talk differences courageously. I think democracy gets a chance. So in that sense, we have to bet on groups like you to sustain democracy. Thank you.